What is going on guys, it's Amit and welcome to lesson number 4 in JavaScript. In this lesson we'll learn all about the syntax of JavaScript including code structure and comments. If you enjoy the content, consider hitting like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 4. So when it comes to JavaScript syntax, the best way to think about it is in terms of statements. Statements are basically commands or instructions that perform actions and our JavaScript code is composed of a series of statements that will generally be executed from top to bottom as the browser's JavaScript engine goes through the script. So let's go ahead to our script.js file. And now we've already looked at a few statements in our previous lessons. For example, we've looked at the alert statement. So we can say alert, brackets, and then double quotes. Let's just say, hey there, end it with a semicolon, save this, and sure enough, we get our pop-up box over here. Now notice that we ended our statement with a semicolon. We could actually write more statements on the same line, making sure each statement is separated by a semicolon. So here then we can just grab this and copy this and then we'll just say hello again and let's go ahead and save this. And sure enough, we get our first pop-up, hey there, and the second one that says hello again. So as you can see, even though we put them on the same line, this still works. But obviously this can start to look really messy and so generally each statement should start on a new line, like so. Now just a word on semicolons. In most cases, the semicolon can actually be removed when statements are placed on a new line, like we have here. So for example, if I remove the semicolon from here and from here as well, save this, this still works. We get hey there and then hello again, even though we didn't include the semicolons. Now, the reason why this works is because JavaScript here will interpret the line break as a semicolon. This is known as implicit or automatic semicolon insertion. However, JavaScript won't always pick up on this. And to demonstrate this, let's take a look at an example. Okay, so first let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now, don't worry at this stage about what we're writing here. We will cover this in more detail as we progress through the series. But here I'm going to say square brackets. And inside that I'm going to say, hey there, comma, space. And then here I'm going to say, hello again. So these were our two alert statements. Then at the end here I'm going to say dot for each. And then in brackets here I'm going to say alert. And once again, guys, don't worry too much about what for each means or the square brackets. To break this down, all this basically means is take these two phrases here and for each of them, alert them. So let's go ahead and save this. Notice we didn't add a semicolon at the end. So save. And sure enough, this works. We get hey there, then we get hello again. But now let's see what happens if we place another alert statement just before this. So let's put this onto line number two and up here, let's say alert. And in brackets, I'm gonna say error example. And of course, for this example, we're not gonna put a semicolon on there. So let's go ahead and save. So we get error example, that's fine. But now we get nothing. These statements here have not executed. Now, if we go to the browser's console, by doing right click, inspect, and here it says uncaught type error, cannot read property hello again of undefined. This is the file name, script.js, and this is the line number that it's on, line number two. So basically it's saying that there's an error on this line. So here then we have an example of an error occurring when we omit semicolons. And the reason why this fails is because JavaScript doesn't implicitly add a semicolon before square brackets. And so this is what the browser sees. The browser sees basically this. This is all on one line like so. So to fix this, we can just put this on a new line, put in our semicolons, save this, and now it should all work fine. So we've got error example, hey there, and then hello again. So guys, this is why it's highly recommended to always include semicolons at the end of each statement. It's a lot safer and it's pretty much accepted across the JavaScript community. Now, another thing I want to explain is that JavaScript ignores white spaces. It is white space insensitive. So here we can add some spacing in between our brackets and our text to make it a bit more readable. Save this and it works just as before. Finally, let's take a look at how to write JavaScript comments and why we should be using them. So first of all, then comments will be ignored by the browser. Comments are basically used to help others or perhaps yourself if you return to your code after some time to understand what's going on in your code. Now there are two main types of comments, single line comments and multi-line comments. So let's see how to actually write those. So up here, let's go ahead and remove this. And now to write a single line comment, we just do double slash. And here I can say this is a single line comment. To write a multi-line comment, we say slash asterisk. And here I can say this is a new line, multi-line comment. And we end it with a asterisk and then a slash. So in this way, we can write comments on multiple lines. Now, it's also important to distinguish between what we call good comments and bad comments. First, let's take a look at an example of bad comments. 
Now, once again here, I'm going to write some JavaScript code, but again, don't worry if you don't know what we're doing, we will be covering this later on in the series. So here, I'm going to write function, and a function is basically a block of code that we can call whenever we want to use it. I'm going to call this function num, and inside here, I'm going to say value, and then inside curly braces, we're going to go ahead and write our code. Now, basically, what this function will do is it will test to see if a number that's going to be provided by us in just a second is an even number. If it's an even number, it's going to console log true. And if it's an odd number, it's going to console log false. So in here, once again, don't worry if you don't know what we're doing. We'll cover this later on. So I'm going to say if. And in here, I'm going to say if value, once we do that, equals to zero, then console.log true or else console.log false. So let's go ahead and open up our console. And now to call or use this function, down here we're going to say the name of the function, which is num. And inside that we're going to provide this with a value. So let's say 2 and do it with a semicolon. So let's save this and let's see what happens. Okay, so in the browser then it says true because 2 is an even number. If we said 5, it will say false because 5 is not an even number. So as you can see, our function works. But here's the problem. It might not be so obvious to someone when they come across this code what this function actually does. And so what you might see is a comment. So let's do a single line comment and let's say check if value is an even number. Now, whilst this is fine, it's not really the best way to use comments. And so this would be an example of a bad comment because actually what we could do is rewrite our code so that it's a bit more obvious as to what it does. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. For now, let's go ahead and use a multi-line comment to comment this out. Just before function, I'm gonna say slash asterisk, and down here, asterisk slash. So if we save this and reload, yep, that's gone now. And now let's see a better way to actually write this out. So down here, let's say function. Instead of calling it num, let's call this is even. Once again in here, let's say value. Do our curly braces. And we're gonna say if value, once we do that, is equal to zero, then console.log. Now rather than just saying true, let's console.log even number, and if it's not true, then let's console.log odd number. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this. So it's called is even. Let's try two again. And sure enough, in our console here, we have even number. Let's try five, and we get odd number. So the difference then between this function and the previous function is that when we take a look at this function, we can kind of see what it does and what it's actually used for. In this case, it's used to check if a value is an even number. And we can also see this with the console.logs down here, even number and odd number. And so the aim here then is to avoid explaining in too much detail what's going on in your code. If you have to explain everything in detail with comments, then you should question whether the code you've written in the first place is actually efficient in and of itself. So the key then is to focus on writing explanatory code as opposed to explanatory comments. Now, obviously, we can't completely do away with explanatory comments. Sometimes our code can be very complex and difficult to understand. And so explanatory comments can be useful. Okay, so that's an example of bad comments. What about good comments? Well, good comments give us an overall high level overview of what's going on and how the different elements within our code actually work together. Now, there's actually a special syntax called JS doc. I'll leave a link to this in the description box below, which helps us to give an overview of our code. So let's take a look at another example. So down here, then I'm going to create another function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to take two numbers and we're going to do a power sum on this. So I'm going to call this power and in brackets here I'm going to say num1 and num2 and inside our function block we're going to return once again don't worry if you don't know what any of this means but we'll be covering this later on in detail we're going to say math.pow which is short for power inside here we're going to say num1 and num2 down here let's console.log the name of our function which was power let's take 5 and 2 okay so basically what we're saying here then is take num1 which in this case is 5 and then take number two, which is the number two. So five to the power of two is going to be, let's do some comment here, it's gonna be five times five, which equals 25. If we said five to the power of three, then it's basically five times five times five, okay, which is 125. So let's keep it to that. Let's go ahead and save this, and let's see if we get the right answer. Okay, so sure enough here, we have 125. So let's take a look at an example of good commenting here. So up here, we're gonna be using JS doc. So to write that, we do slash asterisk, and then another asterisk. And as you can see here now with VS Code, we get the IntelliSense pop-up that says js.comment. And what this enables us to do, among many things, is intelligently identify the parameters that we've used. So here you can see this has come up at param, which is short for parameter. And it's actually worked out that there's two parameters here, num1 and num2. We can say that this is a number and this is also a number. So this is the first parameter. This is the second parameter, num1 and num2. 
and then here we can actually provide a bit more info about this so number one is actually going to be the number to raise and number two is going to be the power to be raised by so we can say the power to be raised by so now what happens, if we hover over our function, it gives us some more information. It says at param num1 is the number to raise and num2 is the power to be raised by. And also down here when we're calling it, hover over this, we get the same thing as well. So as you can see then, this is actually a bit more better because it's giving us information as to what the function does and how it actually works together. So to summarize then, think about JavaScript syntax as a list of statements that are to be executed line by line. Always start a new statement on a new line and include the semicolon at the end to avoid any problems. And focus on writing good code that is explanatory as opposed to basic comments that are explanatory. Good comments provide a high level overview of what your code is about and how the different elements or parts work together. And we can use JS Stock to do this. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the different ways that we can output JavaScript and we'll see what the most preferred way of outputting JavaScript is when it comes to learning. So that's it for this lesson guys, if you found this video helpful be sure to comment, share, like and subscribe down below and I'll see you on the next one.